Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about radioactive half-lives and I've got some Cornell paper that I'm going to be filling out. I already filled out a little bit here so that I could take uh, a little bit less time in my video. So if you need to pause the video at any point in time to jot that stuff down, please do. Remember your name, class period, and date go up here. Um, we're going to be talking about objective three, uh, the half-life of uh, radioactive material, and we're going to answer the questions, what is a half-life and how can half-lives be useful? So the first thing we're going to write down is the definition. And a half-life is a measurement of time. It is the time required for half, that's where it cuts the term half-life, half of a radioactive sample to decay. So let's pretend we had a chunk of uranium. Uranium has a half-life and one half-life then half of that uranium would no longer be uranium. Uh, it would be whatever it turns into when it's done decaying. So uh, that depends on what kind of decay. You watch that video too. So uh, a quick question here. What happens to the stuff after it decays? Um, after it decays it becomes something else, a different element or a different material. And that different element is sometimes called the daughter, D-A-U, whoops, let me try that again, daughter, there we go, uh, element. So uranium-238 turns into, um, I forget, polonium, no, 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 uranium turns into thorium. Uh, via some some kind of decay, alpha decay, and so it um, it it turns into a new element after over time. So we might still have a chunk here, but this is going to be a different element after that half life. Now we can't predict which ones are going to do it or when it's going to happen, but we can know how much time it takes for half of it to decay. So when we look at some graphs, let's look at a graph of the amount that we have versus time. And we'll start out with, uh, maybe we'll put some percentages here. So we'll have 100%, here's 50%. And maybe this is one half-life, and this would be two half-lives, and this would be three half-lives. Well, we're going to start with all of it. Well, actually, we're going to start with all of it over here. Ah. Then we're going to have half of it after one half-life. Half of what we started with after another half-life. Half of that after another half-life, and we're just going to keep dividing by two as time goes by. So our graph ends up being a curve. Um, and I'm going to write that note. Just You just keep dividing by two. Um, that's why it's called a half-life. We're dividing by two repeatedly. Now, the interesting thing is that if you keep dividing by two, eventually um, you get to one, and then you have to divide by half, and then it's just that one either decays or it doesn't. But the interesting thing is that it never really gets to zero, so we never really run out of our radioactive material. It's always there. It just it gets a lot less as time goes by. Now, as that material turns into the daughter element, we end up we start with none of that daughter element, and then after one half life, we end up with the fifty percent, and then after a second half life, we end up with a half more, and then after a third half-life, a half more. So this one kind of does the opposite thing. Um, this is what we're looking at when we care about the radioactive material. We're watching that go down. But uh, for some of the uses, we need to look at both of these so that we can look at some ratios. So let's talk about those uses. Um, a, a good use, uh, the first use I want to talk about is called radiometric dating, and there's a bunch of different words. It might be radioactive dating. It might be uh, radioisotopic dating. I mean, they've got a bunch of different ways to say it. Either way, we're using radioactive materials to figure out how old something is. That's what I mean when we say dating. So what they do is they uh, compare, and they don't actually measure how much it had a long time ago. They measure, they compare the amounts, uh, the amounts of, and they call the original radioactive material the parent, and daughter elements, and those relative amounts um, based on the half-life, which never changes. It doesn't change. The half-life is always the same every single time. 
they compare those amounts to figure out, oh, well, the ratios here are about, oh, there. So this thing must be, oh, that old. So that's what they do. It's actually pretty cool how that works. There's a bunch of different radioactive elements that they can use for dating, depending on how old the thing that you're looking at is. You might have to use another one. Carbon-14 dating is a pretty popular one, but carbon-14 has a half-life of like 5,000 some odd years. So if it's billions of years old, carbon dating doesn't work for that. So they, they don't use carbon for dating dinosaur bones because those are really stinking old. Uh, they use something else. Um, it's a, an isotope of iodine that they're looking at um, to see how much of that is left over because iodine's isotope has a much longer half-life. Half so another use is um, that they use or that they... They use radioactive materials for and the, you, those half-lives half is for timing. Maybe you've heard of an atomic clock. Um, they use... Uh, radioactive materials and they look at those half-lives uh, to make an atomic clock. Um, and then another thing that they use this for, especially in medicine, is figuring out how much is needed. So if you ever have to have some sort of radioactive material given to you as a medicine because you have cancer or um, they need to test you for cancer or something along those lines, um, the hospital here in town will order some radioactive material to be sent, and conveniently, you live in Columbia, and they make some of that radioactive material over at MU. Well, when they make that radioactive material, you need a particular dose at a particular time of day, and so when the doctors order your dose, they look back in time, okay, we need to give this person this many, this man, that many grams of this material, so how much do we need to order so that by the time they take it, we still have enough. Um, it's actually pretty interesting how that one works, but that's a, that's a real-life use of half-lives. So let's look at some calculations that you might have to do. In order to do this, you're definitely going to want a calculator. Here's my good old trusty ancient calculator that works pretty well. So we're going to start. These are going to get progressively harder here. So let's say you had 48 grams of uranium-238. How much will remain after four half-lives? So what that means we're going to be doing is we're going to have our 48 grams... And after one half-life, we're going to divide that by 2. So 48 divided by 2, and I get 24. That's one half-life. After another half-life, I'm going to just count them here. Well, that's 1, here's 2. I'm going to have 24 divided by 2. So I'm going to have 12 grams left. That's two half-lives. I need 4, so I'm going to divide by 2 again. I'm going to get 6. That's my third half-life, and then after one more half-life, that'll be the fourth, so I'll divide by two again, I'm going to have three grams remaining. So half-lives, the number of half-lives is the number of times you divide by two. So I'm just dividing by two repeatedly to figure out how, my, how much I have left. Now let's say it doesn't say that specifically for half-lives. Maybe you have some amount of time that goes by. Well, you're going to do the same thing. Okay, so radon 112 has a half-life of 24 minutes. You had 30 grams. How much will you have after 96 minutes? So the question, the first question you have to answer is how many half-lives? So we've got 96 minutes. How many sets of 24 will go by? 96 divided by 24, that's four. Hey, this is four half-lives also, four half-lives. So what we need to do is we need to take our 30 grams and we need to divide by 2 four times. So there's 1. That will give us 15. Uh, 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. That was a second half-life. Divide it by 2 again. And I get 3.75. Uh, so that was three half-lives. One more time for four half-lives. Uh, 3.75 divided by 2, and I get 1.875 grams. Now, eventually, I'm going to get lots and lots of uh, digits there if I just keep dividing by 2. Yeah, so eventually, you'd want to start rounding, but uh, 1.875 is a good answer to write down there. So I'm just counting up how many times I divide by 2 to figure out how many half-lives go by. So let's try the opposite way. What if we have a sample and we know how much we started with and how much we end with? Can we figure out how many half-lives went by? How many half-lives must pass for a sample of 12 grams of C14 to decay to 0.375 grams? So we'll start with our 12. And this time, the question is really, well, how many times did I have to divide by 2? So let's just start dividing by 2. 12 divided by 2. That's 6. And I'm going to keep going. Divided by 2. That's 3 
Divide by 2, that's 1.5. Divide by 2, am I there yet? That's 0.75. I'll keep going. Divide that by 2, and I get 0.375 grams. So that's what I was trying to get to. So I divided by 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So my answer is 5 half-lives. Now, I could have just done that on my calculator. Started with 12, divided by 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times to get to the 3.75. But I like to keep track of it on paper just to make sure that I don't forget. All right, last one. So now, if I can figure out how many half-lives, I can figure out how much time has gone by. So let's say I start with 96 grams of cobalt-60, and now I only have 3 grams of cobalt-60. Um, it has a half-life of 10 minutes, so I want to know how much time has gone by. So I'm going to start with my 96 grams, and I'm going to start dividing by 2. 96 divided by 2, that's 48. I'm divide that by, whoops, divided that by 2, and I get 24. Keep going, dividing by 2. Now I have 12. Divide by 2 again, and I get 6. Divide by 2 again, and I get 3. That's what I was shooting for. There's my 3 grams. Draw my little arrow. My 3 grams. So how many half-lives went by? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Wow, that was purely coincidental that those had the same number there. But Okay, so 5 half-lives went by. Now, each half-life is 10 minutes. So 50 minutes. I ran out of room there. 50 minutes went by while that cobalt-60 turned from 96 grams of cobalt-60 to 3 grams of cobalt-60. Now, if I had that in my hand, I'd have uh, 93 grams of whatever cobalt-60 turns into in addition to my uh, 3 grams of cobalt-60, but I could measure that. So, uh, so that's how you do calculations with half-lice. Um, sure, it does get a little messy dividing by 2 over and over again. Just keep track of how many times you're dividing by 2, and everything will work out okay. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.